the pocket of your shoulder all the way down mid thigh and exiting mid thigh. Right. We have to think of it, and, and that's all accomplished by getting our hips to where they need to be. And once our hips hips are where they need to be, we're ready to rock. Got some cotton floating there left to right past the target. Pretty slow. Yeah. Hold, uh, you see that inside orange? Yep. Hold nine o'clock on that orange just outside of center. I'm eyes up. Okay. Shoot ready. Send it. Absolutely center punched it. Let's knock, him, let's knock that thing back. How'd that feel? Amazing. Hold. Was like, like I'm at a, <laughs> sitting on a bench rest. Like it's kind of a cheater. Like that's, that's pretty, uh, pretty that's, crazy. That's a Walmart bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> let's see if we can knock it back where it goes. All right, you feel that win? Hey everybody, welcome back. For this video, I'm here with Kenny Wynn from Heartland Precision Rifle. He was the one who took me and Cody out when he was training us how to shoot out to a mile. He was a great resource when we're out there actually learning how to make accurate shots out to range. Yeah, I'm, I'm Kenny Wynn. I'm owner and founder of Heartland Precision Rifle, which is a uh, long range training company set up specifically, uh, more so to help uh, folks within the, the hunting community. Guys go out and punch tags that uh, they've been collecting um, preference points on for years. But my background coming from the military, I uh, started off four years in the Marine Corps. I was lucky enough to come out of the Marine Corps as, as an 0311 as an infantryman. Uh, I was lucky enough to come out of the Marine Corps uh, Ranger and Airborne Qualified, which is uh, kind of a, a rare entity, uh, especially back then in the late 90s. I transitioned into the Nebraska Army National Guard into uh, the first 134 Long Range Surveillance Detachment, which is a reconnaissance airborne affiliated organization, uh, aligned organization. Uh, which fit very well um, as far as with my range of qualifications. So um, I was soon offered. Uh, just, just say in YouTube world, we kind of measure people by their pedigree. So so Kenny has some background with it. Sorry, sorry, keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I really wanted to get to uh, a sniper schoolhouse. Uh, and ironically enough, the, uh, the National Guard in, uh, Marksmanship Center in Arkansas uh, actually put on the first accredited National Guard sniper schoolhouse. I managed to get to that and did pretty well. Um, they asked me to come back on as an instructor. Um, so I graduated the National Guard Sniper Schoolhouse, uh, and they, I came back on and had to go to the active duty schoolhouse as well in order to be an instructor. So I was lucky enough to spend about 18, uh, 19 months within the sniper training community, and it's something I just really enjoyed doing. So a couple combat deployments, um, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. When I retired, one thing that I, I knew I wanted to get into was, was helping others learn how to shoot and how to be proficient marksmen. And it's pretty cool that Kenny is translating those, those like sniper school qualifications to the everyday hunter. So, you know, you go to Cabela's, they buy something, they have all these, you know, optics and rifles and everything they have no idea how to use. Kenny's the kind of guy who's gonna take them out, come to a course, teach them how to use it so they can actually bag that animal and get what they're trying to go for. So pretty cool, pedigree's definitely there. So now let's, let's get to what we're actually talking about. I'm gonna put Kenny on a tripod to kind of show you guys first and explain why you would want to use a tripod because part of part of the piece I don't understand completely is why use a tripod over prone over other positions is this a key piece or is it just you know a super niche thing so let, let's see all right anytime we're, we're thinking about precision engagement right we need to start with stability it, it starts literally with the fundamentals of marksmanship which is body position relaxation um, so Every inch, and I, I say this in every class I teach, every inch that we start bringing the muzzle up off of the ground, we're going to start inducing human factor, right, or human influence just through breathing, being a living being, right, that has potential to translate back through our rifle into our scope, right? And then we also have environmental factors, right? So if we're sitting out here today on a hillside, exposed hillside with 20, 25 mile an hour winds, all right, we're going to get some wind interfacing with our platform and our tripod. Right, so we should always try to start as low as we can. Right, that's first and foremost. So when you break it down from a fundamentals standpoint, if we have to stand in order to engage a target, i.e. I don't have direct line of sight, right, due to an impediment, be it crops, uh, rubble, um, uh, a tree, whatever, a shrub, right, if I have to get my line of sight and my line of bore above that impediment, right 
a stability aid, especially if I intend to be there for a longer duration. Right? I can't just simply stand here in the offhand unsupported and expect to be effective in any manner if a target presents itself. A tripod is, is a tool that allows us to engage at extended distances, right? Or long range distances, depending upon what platform we're using, what caliber uh, we're using, all right? But if we have to, if we need to elevate our muzzle, right? And we're going to be stationary for a long time, perhaps uh, uh, in an overwatch capacity, you know, from a military LE uh, standpoint or from a, a hunting standpoint where we're out uh, uh, at a canyon, you know, at, at a watering hole waiting for that animal to show up. All right. A tripod's a great aid, especially if we know or can expect where a target's going to appear. All right. But also if we have to cover a designated swath of terrain, all right, downrange, a range fan, so to speak, it allows us to traverse it. So like we can see with the field here, you know, everyone would say, hey, what do you need a tripod for? <laughs> Joe on our team does it all the time. What do you need a tripod for? Just lay down. We have, what are these, beans? I'm these are beans, yeah, okay. these, these are soy beans. <laughs> like, so we have beans here. You go lay down this field, you're gonna see nothing. Like, there's no way to go prone here. And if you've ever been to any sort of farmland or anything in the Midwest, this this is the engagement. Like, this, this is what you're gonna see as what you're gonna have to engage with. So you have to be able to get over the boar. So that's why tripods are so important. Now, Kenny, is there is there kind of a pro and a con to going higher or lower? Can you kind of show us on the tripod, you know, what, what are the pros and cons of setting up higher or lower as you're engaging a target? Absolutely. As we mentioned earlier, we want to engage targets as near to the ground as possible. And that's, that's simply because the more monkey we get out of the gun, us being the monkey, the more accuracy, precision we're going to have downrange. That starts by getting low, by relaxing, melting into the ground, melting into the gun. Right. So when I teach the fundamentals of marksmanship, you know, body position, relaxation, aim, uh, breathing, uh, trigger squeeze, follow through. When I teach that bolt gun application, right, and we're engaging targets out to, you know, 800, 1,000, 1,200 out to a mile, right, we're getting relaxed on our gun. It starts with body position and relaxation, right? So whenever we're ready to engage a target or we're going to be in a position for a long time, we want to make sure that we are relaxed. So when it comes to tripod employment, because that's really what we're doing, is we're, we're employing this as a stability aid, right? It starts at line of sight level. Where do you intend, where would you like to, to shoot from? And that should start with, well, how do we get low? Right? So that starts with working yourself back from the target. What kind of line of sight do you at your, your position have, right? If I can see my target, right? And I know if I can see that over the top of my tripod, right? Pretty good odds that when I put my rifle back on there, right, and I interface with my rifle, I'm gonna be able to look through that scope and have good line of sight. So that's the common sense aspect of, hey, where are we em employing it, right, or setting it up? Secondly is, how are we setting it up, all right? We're setting it up to ensure that we have proper recoil mitigation, recoil management. Accept and know that anytime we uh, send a, a firing pin home on a primer, all right, we're gonna get a powder powder ignition that's probably going to give us some sort of recoil. We need to set our tripod up to best absorb that. So when I set my tripods up, I always make sure that I have the back two legs uh, for stability uh, in that position to where it's able to rock back and with me applying some uh, forward pressure, I can keep it in place, all right? If I run it back here and just have one leg on that recoil, all right, now I have the potential, do a little teeter-totter and come back and I'm on a unipod all of a sudden, all right? So the way to think about it is, hey, I have a wide base, all right? And just how you're going to square up to your tripod, all right? Your tripod should be squared up to the target. So you start by squaring your tripod up to the target. And then when you interface your rifle, you'll square yourself up to both. So here's here's another great aspect of a tripod is, is it allows you to, to elevate your muzzle right, or whatever your device is to uh, extended heights uh, in a stable capacity. Um, but with that is, once again, it's the higher we get, the, the more potential we're gonna have for environmental interface with our platform. We're even higher up now, you know, the apex over this wobble zone here, if, if, if that's a technical term that we can use, right, the higher that apex gets, it, the harder it is to control, right, regardless of how well constructed your platform is, 
right? Which is oftentimes where you have uh, individuals uh, who, who are operating off of a high tripod. They oftentimes will also incorporate a rear stability aid of some capacity, be it a, um, a walking stick or a uh, extended bog pod of some nature. Hey, now let's roll into the fundamentals of marksmanship as they apply to tripod positional work. First fundamental of marksmanship, body position and relaxation, right? So regardless of uh, what we're shooting, um, what platform, what stability aid, whether we're prone, whether we're kneeling, whether we're on the side of a mountain, we need to achieve the best body position, all right, that we can, and we need to achieve a relaxed state. All right, relaxed state, that's, we, we can sit and talk about that in, on a whole nother time, how to get there. We're going to talk body position, all right, namely as it applies to stability and interfacing with the tripod. Let's have Walsh come around here and we'll have him uh, interface up through the Arca. That was definitely, definitely not hiding behind there, just listening and learning how to actually use this thing. Okay, so the first thing we did is we have everything connected up, firm interface with our Arca interface there, firm connection, I mean. All right, what, what's next? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna fit him basically to the rifle and get him comfortable on the gun and get oriented on a 300 yard IPSC target that we have downrange. All right, we're gonna try to get as low as we can. All right, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to hopefully low kneeling. If not, we're gonna go to high kneeling. All right, so typically when we go to traditional kneeling, all right, when we go to traditional kneeling unsupported is we put our non-firing knee, all right, forward and our non-firing hand elbow out, and we support the rifle out front, all right, with our actual palm. Now that we have a tripod that's interfaced, that's our forward support, all right, now what we can do is actually change it up to where we can take our non, or our actual, our firing knee, all right, now we can take our firing knee and make that support for our firing hand. Interesting. All right, so I can already tell that we're a little high here, right? So let's see if we can't bring fancy, down. Fancy tripods. Mm -hmm. um, so when I, when I get in behind the rifle, I wanna make sure that the rifle is aligned to the target. Once I'm confident that it is aligned to the target, then I'm gonna align my body the best I can. When we interface with this rifle or any rifle, right, we want to be comfortable in our stock. In our stock, we wanna have proper stock weld right, where we have good eye relief, and we also have our eyeball is centered in the center of the scope, all right? We should be able to do that in a relaxed manner. If we're not doing that in a relaxed manner, all right, we're gonna struggle with accuracy. We're gonna struggle with precision, all right? So first and foremost, we need to be in a relaxed state in order to accomplish that. Where we actually own the rifle, right, whether we're uh, prone, uh, bipod, tripod, um, off of a, a wall, what I try to tell people is to own the rifle in the pocket of your shoulder, right? We already know that the rifle supported out front through that ARCA interface, all right? It's not going anywhere. So if we come off of this rifle, can you come off that rifle real quick, completely? The rifle's there, all right? There's no reason that we need to grab it, manipulate it, micro adjustments potentially, all right? But we can do that through our shoulder, never through our hand. It's this pocket right here. And what I want you to think about is, is getting, uh, making a T essentially with your buttstock as it goes into that pocket. It's kind of a saddle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of forward pressure with that. While we, in some capacity, we can either give a slight pull back, but I like to get a little pressure back and pressure forward through my buttstock. I'm never trying to control the rifle with the pistol grip. So I'm kind of vicing it between my shoulder, like pushing forward here, pulling back with the tripod here to hold it in place because I know the recoil is gonna happen. So I'm just accepting the recoil, knowing it's gonna happen, but then not trying to muscle it here. And instead, because if you think about it, I can control the whole thing without even touching the pistol grip. So just with my body movement, I'm able to put the reticle on target and not only put it on target, I'm just talking to you guys right now. I'm holding it on target dead center. Oh, I just knocked it off, but you get the idea. I'm not even really using the pistol grip at all. I'm showing you guys that example. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So the next piece is, as I stated, is we, in any application that we're shooting, we're always, especially when we're moving from target to target to target, we want to align our rifle and then realign our, then realign our body to the rifle. So when we're using a stability aid, whether it be a tripod, bipod, forward bag, whatever, is when we move from target to target to target, the first thing we're doing is we're moving 
our rifle, we're going to align our rifle to the target, naked eye, just looking over it. And then after it's aligned, we're going to align our body behind the rifle. The main thing is to square your rifle to the target and then square yourself to the rifle. In a tripod application then, like since we can move the ball head and we can adjust all that, would I move the legs so that I'd have the proper recoil mitigation or would you just not worry about that? The only thing you need to worry about is your range fan. What can you cover? What do you need to cover? If you need to cover a large range fan or even a 360 range fan, um, it, it also depends on what platform you're shooting. Something with a a big bo you know a big bore caliber that has a lot of recoil, I wouldn't want us to swing up, swing around and just shooting off one leg, right? So I try to think about my range fan and you know without you know without doing uh, some crazy math, I would bet. I could, I'd want to be able to cover at least 60 degrees, and I think you can do that um, easily. Um, but with a carbine, with a carbine platform, uh, yeah, I mean, swivel and go. So we talk about squaring up to the rifle, uh, aligning our rifle and then squaring ourselves up to the rifle. So I just, I want folks to be cognizant of is, is once they address their rifle, is think about your hips. If we can get our hips, at least kind of think about, hey, I've got my hips behind the gun. I've got my shoulder into the gun, right? The more body, or as I like to call ass and mass that I can get behind the gun, the better recoil mitigation I'm gonna have, the better recoil management. I've watched this shoot and I, I would guarantee there's not a lot of recoil to it, right? Being a suppressed AR platform in 223, right? But if I can alleviate any jump, right? Now I've just turned it into a sewing machine and I just, send stitches downrange. We achieve recoil management, good recoil management by squaring up and getting that ass and mass behind the gun. That pretty much covers body position. Let's jump into the next fundamental, which is aim, all right? Uh, one thing that you're gonna notice with the tripod is very rarely are you going to be 100% locked in just by placing your rifle on the tripod. Once you get on it, you have to acknowledge that you are going to interface with the rifle and a lot of the air that you're seeing is induced by yourself. One thing that will often drive shooters crazy is watching the reticle dance on a target in a tiny circle, right, within a three, four inch radius, right, while you're really trying hard to hold still. We can overcome that by incorporating stability aids, right, rear bags, shooting sticks, backpacks, etc. But we can also learn to control our reticle, right? If we can control our reticle, in a form or a manner like a controlled teardrop to where as we breathe in and breathe out and let that reticle fall into the target to where we time it up like a video game and we're sending that round, poof, all right? That breathing also takes you into the relaxed state, which is part of that first fundamental, right? So if we can breathe, now we're in control of the reticle. That's the per that's the point of that that application. Instead of sitting there trying to hold our reticle as still as possible when we're on the side of that mountain and it's you know blowing 20, 20 mile an hour straight in our face, all right? Instead of trying to hold that reticle right on target, right? We're going to control it, let it do a controlled fall. <sighs> Poof, and touch off that round at the appropriate time. Some other techniques in that capacity are figure eight. You also have the pendulum, right? But typically uh, the one that I really like and that most folks that I, I, I train, I, I train them to utilize the teardrop. And that's what we did on the zero. I'm used to doing more of like the figure eight, kind of seeing like where your natural body kind of goes and we're trying to keep it on target and doing a lot of archery, just pulling through the shot and having a little bit of faith that you're, you, your body position is gonna put it on target. But the teardrop seems like it gave me a little bit more control. And I mentioned that to Kenny too, where I felt like I was getting in position, I could just release. And as I'm coming down, I'm seeing, okay, good, you know, good reticle, good reticle, keep squeezing, good reticle, good reticle, and pow, and let it re release. It was, it seemed like a lot cleaner. I think that's a lot easier way to shoot too. And it, as, as we talked about, it takes you into that state of relaxation, right? It's just like when you sit down on the couch and you take that, that deep breath in and, and you just melt into the couch, that's the same state of mind. I got old man knees, so keep going. <laughs> Our third fundamental marksmanship is breath control, right? Utilizing a tripod allows you to incorporate some different breathing techniques, right? Um, 
nothing wrong with your your standard uh, breathe in breathe out hold eight to ten second pause send it nothing wrong with a controlled delivery like that within that controlled breathing but also you know utilizing a tripod it offers us the ability to in between breaths or as we're breathing in a combat breathing capacity and we can still stay engaged because we have decent stability here as opposed to when we're offhand trying to shoot quickly right we have a lot of influence from our hand which is in interfacing with our ribs and our, our lungs and everything else all right so a tripod helps us uh, to engage with different breathing techniques it also seems like to you know kind of answering that question of why use a tripod even in the breathing, the way you talk about it is, well, hey, you know, sitting prone, you, you can't really scan around and do a whole lot. You're kind of locked in a position. This gives you a lot more scannability, controls more of your breathing. Whereas in a standing position, yeah, you can still scan, but now you don't have nearly as much stability. You can't really breathe properly. You can't have as much accuracy. So it seems like it's kind of blending those two things of your prone and your standing unsupported position. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kenny told me we're going to start shooting soon. I got excited. I went got all my stuff. Not yet. Not yet. So your last fundamental marksmanship is trigger control and follow through. Now, a tripod doesn't necessarily give you better trigger control in any capacity. If we acknowledge that we own the rifle with the pocket of our shoulder, right, then we can also acknowledge that the only reason we need our firing hand on the rifle is because our firing finger apparatus is attached to the firing hand. So when we interface with the rifle, right, I'm trying to just be present with it. I'm not trying to grip it. I'm not trying to roll it over, all right? Once again, we can literally just back away from the rifle. If we back away from the, from the rifle, it's not going anywhere, all right? We don't need to interface with it here. The only way we interface in it with it is 90 degrees forward energy from our body weight into the buttstock. We should try to have make sure that we have a, a wall here, right, or a brace up front, i.e. this front leg, right, that is also giving resistance. So if I'm going to push, if I've got a little bit of pull back, I can seat that buttstock into my shoulder. Once that's there, I've got a nice light grip on my, my, uh, my pistol grip. I'm going to stack this thumb if I'm comfortable with doing so just to get it out of the equation. But that's how I'm going to interface with the trigger. All right, trigger control is trigger control. All right, trigger control is defined as the ability to uh, pull your trigger rearward, send your round without influencing the sights. That's what we're that's what we're trying to accomplish every time we're pulling a trigger rearward or pushing a trigger, as I like to say. I see a lot of people, and you know, I think they get into the weeds of like, hey, where do I put the trigger on my the pad of my finger? Is there a lot to that? And if so, where where to do you recommend? Yeah, to me, it's different uh, different platforms. With various carbines, you're going to have different trigger pulls. I'm assuming this is probably a little more purpose-built rig, maybe uh, an aftermarket uh, a trigger of some nature that's a little lighter. Um, but a lot of your a lot of your carbines are going to be really heavy pull, really deliberate five to eight pound pulls, and those those are that way for a reason. If we have that that carbine that has a heavy trigger pull. Oftentimes we have to reach in there and hook that trigger, all right? With a precision platform, what I usually tell people is this, is, hey, let's let's get low on the trigger. Let's, let's look at it as a hinged object, right? Anything that's hinged, right? We don't want to attack it at the hinges. We want to get low and use leverage, right? So we stay away from the bottom of the receiver. We're definitely not trying to scrape the, the top of the trigger guard there, right? But I want to be about a quarter inch away from that last index, right? That last joint, right? And I wanna be a quarter inch away from the very tip of my finger. So I'm gonna operate in about a three quarter inch space, somewhere in the middle. But what I try to tell people to do is imagine, instead of pulling your trigger, think about your finger pad pushing your trigger straight back at a 90 degree. So you interface at a 90 degree, your trigger pull is push is straight back at 90 degrees, right? Then we never, we never imagine ourselves twisting, binding. We're always thinking in 90 degree angles. When I address my rifle with my head, I come down at a 90, into a 90. By working in that capacity, it helps us maintain better body position. Now let's talk follow through. So 
follow through is determined by your body position. Body position, your ability to mitigate recoil, absorb recoil, right? But follow through is nothing more than the continuation of the fundamentals of marksmanship after you've sent that round down range. I always say it's kind of like Ricky Bobby, right? He doesn't know what to do with his hands. Like, uh, it's the same thing with a lot of shooters after they send a round, they don't know what to do. Like, do I come off the gun? Do I turkey peek over the scope, right? Do I leave my 18 power optic and go to my one power eyeball? Or do I stay on the gun, absorb recoil, find my reticle, put it back on target, reset trigger, and get ready to send the next one, right? Which is exactly what we should be doing, all right? And follow up, I see a lot of people who, who do this at the range, I think, because they want to see where their round landed. And you bring up a good example, like, why are you change it from your 18X scope to your 1X eyeball, but they'll shoot at 100 yards and then pop their head up to see, like, hey, did you see it? Like, bro, you, you're you the one with the scope. <laughs> but it also makes a really, really bad training scar if you were to do that on a long time. Because then if you needed to, for some horrible reason, make a follow-up shot in some so, oh, if you're hunting, you need to make a follow-up shot. That's not a horrible situation. Then you're looking through the scope. You can make that follow-up shot. You don't make the shot and then look up and be like, oh, I missed. Like you, you're going to already know that because you have good follow-through and you can engage again very quickly. So yeah, follow-through is super important. The ability to get comfortable on the gun takes time. If we are consistently coming off the gun after we shoot to see where we hit, which makes no sense, right? That's not efficient. We're looking to be an efficient shooter. By staying on the gun, being comfortable with our platform, running it like a sewing machine instead of a rifle, knowing that we have recoil to mitigate, right? But allowing ourselves to have good situational awareness downrange, right? To where we're not zoomed in just because we have an 18 power scope, we need to be zoomed in at 300 and we can't see anything going on. So what I tell people about situational awareness in their scope is this, is zoom in to a magnification that you really like and then start to zoom back out to where you feel comfortable utilizing your reticle. So zoom in to where it feels really comfortable for you. And now keep zooming down through your power scale until you know that you feel really confident that you can utilize your reticle at that setting. So uh, we're at, what we do? We did follow through, so now we're ready to shoot. Yeah. Okay. Let's grab rounds. Let's grab, you have a rear bag. You have yeah. a backpack. I do. Okay, we're gonna get stuff and we're gonna get ready to shoot. This is the fun part. <laughs> oh, my knees. All right, Kenny. You doing this or you want me to wait? No, you're good. Um, you comfortable? Getting there. Bring, your, hip, bring your hips left. Try to get in behind the gun more. Okay. Bring this over. Come over. Keep coming. There you go. Now, scoot your hips back. Let's bring this foot back. Just a bit. Now try to lean into that a bit. There you go. How's that feel? It feels good. All right, I'm eyes up. Okay. Shoot ready? Send it. Down there in the bottom right. Send one more. Stay on the gun. There you go. You're stacking them down there. You see the, the la lateral line? Yeah. You're down there. You got a little left to right that just picked up. You got like a slight favor left of center. That might that's, up. Done, that's what I've done the last one. I'll give it a little bit more. Yeah. Hold left edge. And come up, come up a quarter target, probably come up like 0 0.1. I'm eyes up. There you go, you center punch it. Send one more. Stay on the gun. Nice steady squeeze. Yep, you center punch it. You can do that all day. <laughs> all right, let's do some other weirdo positions. So how'd that feel? That was pretty amazing. I will say, you know, I was struggling a little bit. You know, we have the beans here. I have to come up a little bit. But once you kind of locked my hips and everything in, got me a little bit more, a little better oriented with the legs, having in the in position, having that 90, and then having that rear bag, everything just seemed locked up. And I think if people watch the footage, they're going to be like, well, of course he hit them all. The reticle's not moving. So yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome. So that's at 260. 
Yeah. Right. We're, we're pretty close. I mean, yeah. we're not in this like extreme distances so you, here. So that target downrange, that's approximately uh, eight wide by probably, I don't know, twelve tall. So a, a, a fairly small size target at two at two sixty, trying to shoot that offhand, right, or even off of a goofy pop, set of long bipods, that gets tough. But just by doing some basic uh, uh, stability, um, common sense practice on on the tripod. You shore it up, and as you saw, I believe I believe it recorded, but I think you stacked three literally on top of each other at 260. Yeah, and I think one of them I kind of had moved off because I was trying to, I saw it hit to the edge. We had, we had some issues where it was a little bit off to the right before, and I think I'm gonna, we'll make some adjustments with the reticle. But I had kind of moved it off. It wasn't an exact position, and then I kind of locked everything in for that last few, and they were just like, bloop, 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 like this is perfect. So at 260, I mean, we show it with a tripod. You can not only have that panning and having some extra ability to see things, but then also still have those super accurate shots. So yeah. Absolutely. All right, yeah. so let's do some more. Okay. So what I really like about this Elevate tripod is that I can easily get it to my desired height. Just by loosening up my legs, I can simply lift the whole platform up to a ballpark position and then lock everything back down and then do my adjustments from the seated position. So hop in there, get comfortable on the gun. Think about your hips, think about your, your center line. There you go. So I, I've been talking about stability aids. A lot of folks carry backpacks in some capacity. What we can do is we can take this backpack, which we may very well be carrying somewhere along with our rifle and use it as a stability aid by putting it underneath our firing arm. Ooh. If you also happen to have a rear bag, you place that rear bag now on top of that backpack, and you now are essentially sitting on a rest, at a gun rest. And, and it's funny because that's exactly- Or utilizing a gun rest. Like you, I feel like I'm just at a gun rest. We're just kind of fudding it up. I'm sure we'll shoot accurately. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that we're using things that we would have with us from backpacks to rear bags, and we set up a position that's as stable as a rear bag. One thing that we can do to better utilize our sling and actually make it uh, dual purpose, aside from just carrying, is we can utilize it in a the same push-pull capacity that I talked about. If we have it attached, interfaced, what I like to do is, if possible, I can move it later. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> what I'll often do is try to, to bring it to the other side. Do we have one on the other side? No, I have to move that one. It's all good. So if you can take your QD mount and put it in a position where it helps to uh, better uh, bring pressure back to the center apex of the tripod, it's something to think about. That's, that's kind of a rabbit hole. Um, but what you can do is wrap this around one of your backward or your back legs grab it like you would a throttle and then twist it tight in doing so you're going to get some pressure back into the apex of the tripod which will help lock it in that coupled with your 90 degree forward pressure you can really lock in your reticle so one other thing that you can utilize your sling uh, as well is what they call a brake pedal and you can take your sling and you can actually fabricate it to where you can make a loop in the bottom to where you tie it back on itself. But now you can put your foot in that loop with slight downward pressure, locking it there, locking it forward. 90 degrees down, 90 degree forward. Always working a 90 degree angle of some capacity. So we're getting back in position so we had to turn all the cameras on. Uh, and something Kenny wanted to reiterate is how important the spotter was in this role, even in this position. Yeah, so the fact that we have a tripod is is great it's a great stability aid however it's not solely typically if you're working a shooter spotter team it's not solely the the shooter's responsibility to set things up so the shooter may be setting up the tripod or the the hunter right maybe setting up his tripod while he's attaching it all right but a guide or a spotter all right partner is going to be there to to help build a position right so if you have a stability aid what you're doing is you're you're building that position. Once he uh, once he establishes his his basic body position, now we can go in and start supplementing that and throwing in the resources that we've brought along into the game 
And my job is to build a shooting platform and then simply ask him, how does that feel? And him building it as I'm sitting there is so much better than you just trying to figure it out. Cause you're like, oh, that's perfect, I'm good. So, mm -hmm. so if there is something, like let's say we had another rear bag or a sand sock, right? Hey, how do we incorporate that? He can say, "Hey, gr grab me another rear bag. I want to put it. Uh, I want to put it on my right ass cheek. That helps stabilize me this way. It's all good. You just make it happen for him. And once he's comfortable, you say, "Hey, are you good? What else do you need? That's it. Okay. If he's solid, he's okay. going to handle the rest. I feel like I don't have my check my hips though. I think my hips are not. Yeah, push left a bit and probably come back a little bit. Bring your whole bring that chair back like two three inches. There you go." What I like to tell people when they address a rifle is if you can think about elevating above yourself like in an imaginary capacity and looking down on yourself, where would the line of bore come through your body, right? If we had a laser coming back through the bore, through the stock, through your shoulder, where is that going to come out in relation to your body position? And if you can imagine, right, or put yourself in a position where it's, it's essentially taking your body into thirds, it's taking your, your left third right and running a line from the pocket of your shoulder all the way down mid thigh and exiting mid thigh right we have to think about and, and that's all accomplished by getting our hips to where they need to be and once our hips hips are where they need to be we're ready to rock uh let me let me look at this wind here real quick got some cotton floating there left to right past the target pretty slow yeah hold uh you see that inside orange yep hold nine o'clock on that orange, just outside of center. I'm eyes up. Okay, shooter ready. Send it. Absolutely center punched it. Let's knock it. Let's knock that thing back. How'd ready? that feel? <laughs> Amazing. Hold. That was like, like I'm at a <laughs> sitting on a bench rest. Like it's kind of a cheater. Like, that's that's great. uh. Pretty that's, crazy. That's a Walmart bar stool. <laughs> Let's see if we can knock it back where it goes. All right, you feel that wind? Yeah. Give me give me a little bit of daylight off of that left edge of that orange. I'm eyes up. Actually, hold, hold nine o'clock on the steel on that uh, that orange plate. I'm eyes up. Shoot ready. Send it. Just inside. Oh, oh, you meant on the outside of the orange. Okay, so yeah, I yeah, you're, you're good. Yeah, hold, yeah, hold nine o'clock on the outside of the orange, the plate there. Shoot ready. Send it. There you go. <laughs> well, uh, let's just uh, let's send her back out again one more time. All right, there's a T-zone up there. Oh, okay. Wanna See that T-zone? Yeah. Let's hold, yeah, let's hold nine o'clock on that T-zone. Or you can kind of hold out by the left ear if you want. I'm eyes up. Shooter ready? Send it. <laughs> Clipped his left ear. Go, I'll go in just a second. Yeah, just bit. walk it in a bit. Your elevation's perfect. Think about that push pull. Yeah, I'm eyes up. Keeping the fundamentals is an important part of it. Cause I'm, I'm seeing myself wobble a little bit and I'm like, okay, what am I not doing? There we go. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Slight breeze. Yep, don't fight it. Slight breeze, stay same spot? Yeah. That wind's kind of staying constant. It's like a seven to eight. Okay, shooter ready? Send it. Got it. That'll do it. Send her back? Yeah. Last now round. think about that hold. I'm eyes up. Probably hold right ear somewhere in there. I'm yeah. eyes up. Okay, shooter ready? Send it. Losing my fundamentals. Here we go. 
Yep, reset. Shoot it when you're ready. Shoot it ready. Send it. Wind died on us. Oh. And we're touch we're a touch low though. That's my bust. Hold center mass. Or hold you know, hold uh eleven o'clock on that square. Kind of up by the uh, right ear. Okay. I'm eyes up. Shoot ready. Send it. There you go. I cheated you on that last one, that second to last yeah, one. That wind hard. died. <laughs> that's still amazing. Uh, I, I was laughing about it as we're shooting it. Uh, once you have the position set up, it's jokingly easy. It, that's, it feels like I'm shooting off of some bench rest somewhere and making fun of someone for doing it because it's that easy and we're shooting it with that. 350? That was, uh, that silhouette's at 315. Yeah, 315, and we're hitting, we're hitting small. So to put it in perspective, that was, uh, the vital zone, I believe, is a eight inch circumference. Yeah. So four inch radius, eight inch circumference. And the T zone is, um, I believe, a five wide with, uh, I don't know, it's probably, probably a five by two T zone. And I think it's the funniest part is that not only were we able to knock it out, but then just only aim at the eight inch circle and just like, all right, push that back. Yeah. And same with, same with the T zone. Like, hey, push that back in. Like, okay, whoop, there it goes. So, okay. Uh, I think this is a great example. And, you know, really we're showing how many different positions you can shoot with a tripod and how effective you can be with it. From what I understand, there's a ton more. There's a lot of different positions. Let's do, let's do one more and push it out as far as we can go. Yeah. Let's go to, uh, let's do standing. Standing tripod supported. We won't incorporate any other aids. Um, we'll just do some push pull. Uh, I'll try to make sure I get my wind calls right on this one, and we'll uh, uh, we'll smack that. What, what, where we right? 450. Yeah, four, 440, yeah. 450. Yeah, we have, there's, we have a uh, 22 inch disc blade out there that we're gonna smack out at uh, 450. -ish. All right, let's do it. One more. Hey, so we're we're moving up uh, the tripod here a bit. We're coming from seated. Uh, bar stool position, which is, I don't know if that's a true technical uh, fud, position. Fud stool position, yeah, yeah but uh, it's accurate as hell. Yeah, with uh, that was you know tripod supported me. We incorporated a backpack and a rear bag into the equation and absolutely drove tax out there at 315. Now we're going to go to uh, standing. Uh, what we're what we're alleviating this time is any backpacks or rear rear stability aid for uh, that's tied into the butt stock in any capacity. And we're going to show you on uh, a 22 inch targeted disc blade out there what we can do from just standing off tripod. And what's interesting about this is what I'm already seeing, there's no aids, so anything the shooter does wrong, you're gonna see it, so it's gonna be great. Okay, I'm assuming then we, we kind of do the same as before, we just square up with the rifle. You talked about the 90 degree, I wanna imagine, see that imaginary line coming through me, putting the rifle in that pocket. I think I need to come down just a little bit as I'm, as I'm feeling it, maybe not. Yeah, and think about think about where that left hip is. That imaginary line, that laser line, right, should come straight down, right? If it's coming straight down, it'd go through that left hip of yours as a lefty. Yeah. I want to be back, our feet back just a little bit more. So if you could scoot your feet back, and now don't be scared to lean into, that might be a little, now really lean into this. Widen your feet a little bit more. Really lean into it. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I'm not necessarily trying to knock it over, right? But if we are shooting a big bore application, the more we can get into the gun at that 90, right? If we can get some some push and pull, as we talk about, all right, it's going to help us absorb that recoil, help us bring it straight back if we have our hip in line, all right? If we have that wide base along with a wide base from the tripod, we're given a good rear stability for our, for our interface with the butt stock in our shoulder. And if people can see this, hopefully the camera's running and what I'm seeing, I mean, I'm talking, so I'm throwing off the reticle a little bit, but how stable this is, I mean, just standing, that's a little bit ridiculous. So I'm looking forward to taking these shots. 
leaning that like, it seems like a goofy position, but leaning into it like this is really locking everything up. Like I'm pushing it with my shoulder, I'm pulling it with my arm, and that reticle is just staying just completely locked in place. Yeah, we're, we're not trying to recklessly lean into the gun or try to knock anything over. It's, it's, an, it's a nice, happy medium, but we should have some good pressure, and that's all coming through our shoulder, all right? That's coming through our shoulder, and we're pushing that 90 degrees back straight towards the apex of the tripod, and we're getting a little push-pull if we want uh, from our non-firing hand. Shooter ready? Send it. There you go. You're just down there six o'clock out of that middle circle. Come up like point one. Your wind's good. You can probably hold a slight favor left from center. I'm eyes up. All right, one more time. Slight, uh, slight favor left from center? Yeah, slight favor left from center, come up point one. Think about your hips, square up. There you go. I'm eyes up, tell me when you're ready. Shooter ready. Send it. About center punch it. Say one more. That one's center high on you. I think. Say one more. There you go. Now you're back in there. Say one more. There you go. Cheat down just a touch. Your wind's perfect. All right, around. <laughs> so, what'd you think of the day? Uh, it was pretty good. I do want to comment on I had shot shooting from standing off a tripod before, and there was a lot of movement, a lot of variation, and I I thought it was pretty frustrating, but then once I got back into position, I think that's that's the key piece of it, like really understanding it, and even your spotter looking at you and saying, hey, this is wrong, hey, let me see your position and, and fix it for you, because then even at the 440 yard target, I was as locked in as the 330, so yeah. it felt great, and, and even shooting standing off a tripod is just crazy. How was, what'd you think of like the push-pull concept? Did you think of that? Yeah, and it really, because I think that's what was the piece that takes the hand out of the equation. Like mentally, as I push it with my shoulder and I pull with my hand, now my firing hand is just pulling yep. a trigger. It's yep. not, it's not monkeying and, anything. And that's just an application that works for me. Like there's, there's probably tripod dudes out there that say that's the dumbest thing you could do. Of course, it's the internet. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah, for whatever reason, it has always worked for me. It's a technique that I've always taught anyone who wants to get serious about. I swallowed a bug. Yeah, <laughs> did you? <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. So anyone who wants to get serious about running a tripod, that's typically what I'll tell them is, is think of that, think, in, think of working in 90, degrees, 90 degree angles um, and uh, don't let the tripod kick your ass. Yeah. So big thanks to Kenny. Thanks for letting me come out here. Um, make sure to check out Heartland Precision Rifle if you want to you know, learn to shoot your rifle better, to go out and go hunting, learn those skills like we're doing today. I think from a video point of view, we really did see that tripods are not only viable you know, from a hunting standpoint, but also from a tactical standpoint to give you a much larger vantage point to keep, what? the bench rest style accuracy, which I think was probably the craziest part for me, being able to shoot that well out to distance that easily. It was, it. I've had way harder shoots. That was not difficult. That was just a boring Sunday. So yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having me out. Thanks for learning about tripods. If you guys want to learn more from Kenny, he's got tons to teach from it, you know, how to do breathing properly, just more on the fundamentals, or we could do some crazy, we want to do some six millimeter art crazy stuff. So yeah, you guys let us know what you guys want to see. <laughs> But I want to say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members for making this possible. We can do all this cool stuff and test everything out and show you guys all the results. And I want to say big thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment below what you think and make sure to send Kenny some love. All right, guys. Have a good one. By taking our hand out of the equation, right? Um, here, let's get rid of all that shit. Um, all right? But at the end of the day, it's, where the hell was I going? I was rambling. Um, <laughs> the trigger pad, yeah. right? That was good okay, stuff yeah, too, but yeah, yeah the yeah. trigger pad. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> how to shoot out to a mile. And he's, uh, sorry. I don't know where I was going for that, with that. Me either. Yeah, I know, yeah. I can control it. If I can get it in the right spot. Yeah, there we go. What are you guys doing out here? Get out of here. Actually interface with the rifle here. All right. Step one, yeah. 
So when we interface with a tripod, uh, our battery's dying, so uh, we're ending the video. <laughs> but uh, big thanks to Fatboy Tripods also for letting us use all these and test them all out. Stay tuned. Uh, I will do my best to get you guys some more of the tripods to learn more about them and do some information about those. Okay, seriously though, uh, battery's dying. Okay, bye guys.